Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kelsey and thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am going to be doing a very last minute Christmas present DIY. Now I originally found this from the Sorry Girls. If you don't know who the Sorry Girls are, um, please stop. They're a channel here on YouTube and they are awesome. Their names are Kelsey and Becky and I love them so much. They're Canadian, but they do all these awesome DIYs and like room decor stuff and I just, they do great things. I have so many things in my house because of them. Now a few years ago, I think this might even be like three years ago, at least two years ago for sure, they did these blanket scarf DIYs and I have made so many of these. It's just literally taking like giant pieces of fabric and turning them into giant blanket scarves. So this is one, this is actually my husband's. He wears this often. I have one that's like red flannel and um, I thought I would show you how to make one. They are the easiest thing ever. They take a little bit of time, but they are so simple and a great last minute Christmas present. I know we're five days from Christmas at this point, and so if you're anything like me, you probably have some Christmas shopping to do still. If so, this is a great one to try out, because not only are you giving someone actually like a usable gift, like this is something, I literally wear my blanket scarf like three times a week at least, especially if it's cold. You want something like warm and cozy just to like wrap around you and keep you so warm. So not only is it usable, but it's super affordable and you're making it for someone. So it's like triple whammy. Now, what you're gonna need to start is some fabric. So over the years, like I said, I've made so many of these. I can't even count how many of these scarves I've made. It's at least like 15. I've made them with all different kinds of fabrics. And the thing that I figured out is that the best fabric for it is like this fabric. So this fabric that my husband's is, I typically buy this at Joann's and this is like a, they call it like a shirting flannel. So this is actually something like a fabric that you would buy to make a shirt. So like a flannel shirt, that kind of fabric where it's a little bit soft, but it's got like some ruggedness to it. That's the best kind of fabric for this project. I've also tried like super lightweight like cotton fabrics and those are cute too, just not as warm. Um, but today I'm trying something a little bit different. This is like a really dense fabric. Again, it's like that flannel shirting kind of material, but it's just like a little bit denser. But I love this pattern, right? It's like kind of Western, so cute. So you're gonna need I mean, it's kind of up to your discretion, but I usually go for like a yard and a half at the fabric store, and this will get you a giant piece of fabric. I've got about a yard and a half going from side to side, and then this way, it's about a yard. So from here to here, well, yeah, that's about a yard. Um, but this is a huge piece of fabric. Now when you buy fabric, there will be a seam at the top of your fabric because that's how fabric comes. It's how it is put together. I actually did cut this off already because I started this project before and I thought, you know what? I should share this with you guys because I gotta help you out. I gotta help you with these fun DIYs. And so I already cut it off, but what you'll do once you get your fabric is trim it. So what's great about plaid is that you can just go in to your plaid, pick a line, and then just follow it. So like if this was the seam here, I would just take this whole chunk off and go down to like this blue line and cut all the way across. And then you'll just do that all the way around your piece of fabric until you have like a clean straight edge on your fabric. And so I have already done that. So. I'm good to go on to the next step, but again, that step is literally the easiest thing ever. A lot of times when you buy fabric at the fabric store, they will cut it, but not super great. So you just gotta kinda clean it up a bit. Again, pick a line, kinda follow it down. And then the next part, 
you're pulling the fabric apart. So I'll show you how it's done, but essentially all you are going to be doing is taking like little frays of fabric here. So I've got this little string and pulling it down until you get to the amount of fraying you want. So like on my husband's here, it's got about an inch and a half worth of fraying on one side. And then I think I did a little bit longer on this side. Again, I usually will just kind of like pick a stripe on the fabric and go down to that point. So like on this one, that's a really big chunk. So I'll probably go like halfway on this blue part. So it's so simple, but I'll, uh, I'll zoom you in. But if you want to see the original tutorial on this, because the sorry girls are better at explaining this and like better at putting this all together, I will link that video down below for sure. Check it out. And if you aren't subscribed to the sorry girls, you should be. They're awesome. So I'll zoom you in here and we'll get started. So here's a close up view of that fabric, but what you're gonna do is just, again, pick one of these stripes, follow it down with scissors, clean up the edge, and then you're just gonna start tearing these pieces of string away until it starts resembling a fringe. few pointers, the further you go along through this fringe, the harder it's going to be to tear the strings out. So I end up kind of like pulling one from the side and then I'll actually just like pull it through the fabric instead of just away from the fabric. And my cat thinks I'm playing. But on this side, I'm probably gonna go until about this middle blue line here that goes in between these two white trolleys. Stop it! Um, so I'm just gonna keep pulling this and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. off the edges so you do have like two long sides and two shorter sides I mean both sides are pretty long but on the longer side I didn't go quite as long with the fringe just because you've got a lot of space there a lot of string to pull so that's about a half inch and then on the shorter ends I went a little bit longer and it's about three quarters of an inch to about almost an inch probably. But so the first few that I made of this, and this is the sorry girls say to like sew off the edges or like the corners to make sure that your fringe isn't going anywhere. And I totally agree. Like if you want to be professional or like if you want this thing to last, I guess you could sew it. But like I said, I have made so many of these. The one that I made my husband and the one that I made myself, I think I made two years ago and they literally, they have not budged and I've actually even washed them. So I just don't even bother sewing them up anymore. I did the first few and I just, that's too many steps. So literally an hour later, I mean, it only took me like 45 minutes, but I also already had the fabric all cut. So if you were to cut everything, pull out all the strings. It's like an hour long project. It is not hard. It doesn't take a super long time. It's a little tedious pulling out little tiny pieces of string, but it's so worth it. Like look how cute this is. It's adorable. So my favorite way to wear these is to grab two opposing corners. So like corners that are like on a square, like on either side, you know? So I pull it around by those corners. And there you go. 
You just have this like super fluffy and like warm and cozy scarf. I love this thing. I have been needing a new one of these for a while because the one I have is like a red, white, and blue kind of pattern. And my hair being this like peachy color, kind of rose gold color, the red kind of clashes with it. And so this blue one is so cute though, right? So, again, I'll leave the Sorry Girls link down below. They do better at describing things. I just wanted to bring this up because this is literally my favorite go-to DIY present ever. And then you can even like wrap this thing up. Like if you fold it up all cute, roll it, and then put like a little string on it. It's adorable. It's also multi-use. You could just like literally wrap yourself in like a blanket. I like bringing these to the movie theater because you never know, sometimes it's gonna be cold so I'll wear it and then I can like take it off and actually like cover myself like a blanket. But I love these scarves, they're the best. You can wear it as a shawl, you can just kind of wear it up front if you want to with like a big coat. It's literally the best scarf ever, you need one of these in your life, just make it. And the best part, it is so inexpensive, I've made these for like less than ten dollars. Oftentimes the like basic material at Joann's like the one that my husband's is is like like I said that flannel shirting material. A lot of times this is $9.99 a yard or like right around there and then you can all the time get like a 50% off coupon so that's gonna knock it down to like $5.99 a yard. If you use a yard and a half that's like eight dollars and this one was a little bit more expensive because this is like a heftier kind of fabric. I think this one was like $14.99 a yard and then like a half off coupon, which if you're ever shopping at Joann's and not using a half off coupon, you're doing something wrong. It's a very affordable project, highly recommended. I love this thing so, so much. So that was it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you make one of these scarves. If you do, I would love to see it. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you haven't already. I would love to have you around. And until next time, bye guys. Hey, I don't hear you guys. Trolley, go.